Um, you know, obviously proud of our performance tonight. Um, it's a really good Tulsa basketball team. And, and what I mean by that is uh, I was really impressed on film. Thought they'd been playing some really, really good basketball. Obviously, they didn't make shots tonight. I, I'd like to think we had a part to do with that, I'm sure. It seemed like there was a lot of open shots in the second half. They just weren't in rhythm. So it's probably a little bit of both. I thought for our guys, you know, the, 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 the comments this week was don't, don't walk into the gym for shoot around of the game today if you're not coming in with an edge and you're not coming in with a sense of urgency. And uh, I reiterated that at shoot around. And I thought the first five minutes of the game, we had a tremendous sense of urgency, a tremendous edge. You saw our press at full force, flying around, getting loose balls, getting the first 350 50 balls, getting a lot of deflections, um, and, and playing to the style of play that we want to play. Um, for the first time in, in, in a while, and, and we've we've kind of scaled back on our transition offense. It's one of the adjustments we've made. We, we played, we're playing less 94 feet than I'd like to, just because it, it it's better for our personnel right now. And um, I thought tonight we actually got out in transition and, and, and showed what we can do in the open court. Uh, you can only do that if you get stops, if you can pull, get the ball out of the, off the rim instead out of the net. So I was proud of that. And in the second half, I thought we had that same mentality as we did in the first half for about six or seven minutes. And I thought we gave up a ton of open looks. They were just out of rhythm and weren't making shots. So we got we got to get better at sustaining effort for long periods of time. Um, but you got a lot of, a lot of good individual performances tonight, and uh, uh, you know proud of the, proud of the guys overall from a defensive and offensive standpoint. Glenn, on his way back to being Portland. Yes, and I, I didn't coach him obviously, so I don't know exactly what that looks like. Um, but you know everybody else seems to know what it looks like more than I do. Um, but I, all I know is he's way more explosive right now. Uh, he's more dynamic. Um, he, he can do things for longer periods of time. And um, he's, he's, he's locked in mentally for longer periods. It's just getting in shape and probably feeling healthy. Uh, they, they, I think he's really probably stopped there. And I think he's even more connected right now with his teammates and his coaches than he's ever been. So really proud of his performance tonight. I, I joked with him afterwards that, uh, you know, let's not go for quadruple doubles. Uh, with five turnovers, let's let's stick to go after triple doubles. And uh, he was he was obviously exceptional tonight. And I I made the comment in the media this week to you guys that I thought he was really good in Tulane too. So I think this has been a process for him that he's just continuing gotten better. Well, you know what, Justin, part of it was Mike got in foul trouble. So Mike has been now been in foul trouble for two straight games. So we've needed him to initiate it more. Um, I like it, but I also like playing him off the ball, too, because our actions provide him off the ball, give him a chance to get some touches. So it's a little bit of both. I mean, we play him four positions. I mean, we really play him one through the four. So and one of the things I told him when I got here is I'm, we're going to move you around. So um, now that requires him to know a little bit more. And, and again, the more you have to learn, sometimes you get locked up, right? I think he's learning it now, and he's understanding it. And it's funny because during games what will happen is he'll be at one of his four positions, and he won't remember the play, and he'll look over at me, and I'll have to talk him through the play. And, it's a joke we have on the side. Like, if I look at you, coach, I have no idea what the play is. But we're asking him to know a lot of positions. So, and uh, but he, he's been good. Third game in a row, Mama Dean has been able to come off the bench and, and give you a spark. Where's his <coughs> progress at, and how much has he earned your trust as a coach? Yeah, yeah, no question. Chad, he's. So I took Trey out with about 7:29 in the second half, and. It was a point I made it afterwards. Trey was like, no, nah, Coach, I'm good. But they, all these guys are good. They could be dragging their tons, dragging on their head. They don't want to come out of the game. Do went in and took Trey's level, which was high, and went to another level. Blocked shots, got rebounds, changed the game defensively the way we needed it. We got out on transition more. And my comment to Trey and the other guys were, that's, that's what a good bench does. All right, they take the energy that we had and they take it to another level. And Dude's done that because Dude's playing with a free mind. He's, he's not worried about anything. He's not worried about points. He's not worried about minutes. He's not worried about when he gets taken out, when he's going to get put back in. He's taking advantage of the opportunity. And when you do that, you play more. And, and that's, the, that's the point that I try to get across to him. If you let, be less worried about coming out and more worried about what you do when you're in. How far has he come from when he got here to where he Well, is? so the thing we challenged him to do with was you, he didn't know any of the plays. Okay. And, and he didn't know. I mean, I thought I was speaking a different language. And he thought he was too. But in terms of what he was hearing. Now he knows almost all the plays. And he knows them from two positions, the four and the five. That's a credit to him and our staff of a lot of time in the office working in film and a lot of time watching stuff. And I told him, I, I can't play you until you know our offense. And he now knows it. He knows it as well as you know almost anybody on the team. Obviously, 
No, it's just we got in transition. We got in the open court. If we're willing to be a good transition team, which we haven't really been want wanting to do this year because it requires a lot of running and it requires a lot of effort. See, everybody wants to talk about playing fast, but nobody wants to work to play fast. And uh, that's the result of it if you get out in transition and make plays because the talent's there. Our guys don't always want to run to the spots they need to run to. And if they're not going to run to the spots they need to run to, then I'm going to slow it down and we're going to walk it up. And uh, I don't. W well, ultimately, we're not going to look like that. But we're going to have to look like that for the time being until guys understand how hard they got to sprint. Yeah, no, no question. So, you know, after the Tennessee game, I really felt like we were really starting to figure it out offensively. And then we go Iowa zone, Tulane zone, Tulsa zone. So, you know, it requires you to be a little bit adjust and it requires you to have a little bit more uh, versatility offensively. I have no idea. I mean, it depends what they want to do. I, you know, I have no idea. Yeah, I mean, Fletcher, we, we kept him out of rhythm early. So sometimes when you can keep him out of rhythm early, you can keep him out of rhythm for the game. Um, but I thought we gave him a lot of open looks in the second half that I was disappointed in that we're going to have to clean up. Because that's exactly what's happened when we've given up our leads. We give up an open look, and now they go down, and we, 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 we bob our heads. We gave up those same looks today. They just didn't make them. So that's the message I've got to get across to our team that, hey, listen, we, we, we do control whether teams make shots or not. I know that we, like they, we don't, but I, I believe we do. And our, my teams have always been elite at three-point percentage defense, elite at it. And uh, it needs to be much of the same going forward. So it was. So I, you know, I don't really like my daughters having cell phones, okay? So in the middle, late in the game, they're at the free throw line. And I was like, well, I wish somebody would scream, right? And my daughter, according to my wife, after the game, put her head away from her cell phone and started screaming, and he missed a foul shot. So I, I told you it's a big part of it. When they scream, t I, I've lived it now. Obviously, the, the crowd that I had before wasn't nearly as large as the crowd here, so maybe they can't hear them. But our three free throw percentage defense was much better tonight. So get off your cell phones and scream. <laughs> now that goes for those two, but I'm really talking about the other 10,000 people that are at the game. So as we saw down the locker room again, Tennessee, Iowa lose. UConn, Tulane. Again, performance was good in each one of those games, but it, it didn't finish. So we can't have that again. we got to take the next step as a team. And I thought we did in, in spurts tonight in terms of keeping our lead instead of losing the lead. But now we got to go on the road and play a little bit better. So you, you learn from past experiences. You can't live in them, but you learn from them. We need to take the next step there. <laughs> I don't know. I had a few. Right. had the one to trade when he dunked it, and then uh, – well, I had a lot with Javen when he was knocking down all the threes. Is that what you guys, both of you answered each other, is that what you envisioned when you both, you know, you came back for this and, and you transferred here for this season, that second half? Yeah, I mean, uh, he's definitely, he can help us at the shooting at the shooting spot, and uh, he was open and I found him. 22 points, seven rebounds, eight assists. Does it feel like that's the best you've played this season, like that's, the Jaron Cumberland we expect. Yeah, it felt good actually tonight. Uh, I didn't know my, I didn't know any of the stats, so uh, I know I had a lot of assists. But um, yeah, I felt good just playing tonight, and uh, a lot of guys were open. I found them. When you when you see something like that second three, it bounced up and bounced around. Is that when you go, all right, maybe maybe tonight it, it's bouncing for me? Yeah, I knew I was. It was going to be a good night after that. When I saw that one, and I'm like, wow, that's what it, that's what it, like I just thought in my head. That one, it's like when it came off the rim first, you thought you missed it for sure. Yeah, that's what I thought. You've had a couple of games where you're know, starting to point the pitch up, shooting the pitch up. Could you feel this building a night like this for the past couple of weeks? Uh, yeah, well, I mean, we've been having great practices and everything. And uh, Coach, he's been uh, giving us good game plans. And we've just been coming out and performing. Jacob, what was it that got you, got you loose a little bit? I mean, it seemed like hit a couple and then went cold and then able to turn it back on? Mm -hmm. I mean, can't really go on the making the shots. Just got to keep playing and just keep shooting. And uh, he found me a couple of times and I was able to knock him down. Jason, what was the message at halftime? Or what was it that seemed to spark you 
guys on offense in the second half? Well, just keep playing. Just keep playing. Don't no let ups. No, uh, yeah, just pretty much no let ups. Just keep playing. Is it pissed at that point? Uh, I mean, he's always energized and <laughs> always, always energized. So I mean, nothing different. He was just wanting us to keep playing, and that's it. He doesn't know what pissed at that point looks like, does he? <laughs> <laughs> Just finding uh, the open guy, uh, especially in the post, like the uh, little free throw line area, just getting in there and play inside out. Second half defense has been a concern. You were able to hold them to 22 points. Is that focus dialing in or is, is it anything special or it just worked out like that tonight? I mean, we start off like that's our, that's our mindset, defense. Um, we played really good tonight. I mean, we was like feeling our offense and – I think our defense was really well, too. We got a lot of rebounds. Cam, you were hitting from three tonight, but it seems like you've been getting to the basket a lot better. Was that just a case of you getting <coughs> healthy finally and feeling like you could turn the corner? Yeah, I definitely do feel more healthier now. Um, it was just the way they defended me and let me get downhill. <coughs> John's put the ball in your hand a lot. You know, whether you're bringing it up or not, but just kind of starting the offense, how has that helped you over the past couple of weeks or changed the way you've been playing? Um, it helps me see the floor more and uh, helps me just find an open guy because as soon as that happens, then it opened the paint up for me. Jaden, did it feel like winning things at all a little bit? Mm, yeah, it felt nice, but I mean, we're, that's what we're capable of doing, so just got to build off of this. How do you take this and take it on the road? I mean, that's been the big you know, question, playing like this consistently away from home. Uh, we got to forget about this win now and get prepared for UCF. <laughs>